Welcome to another episode of LibertarianProgressive.com, blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel. This is Thomas Keegan, your host, and today we have an exciting episode. We're interviewing Rex Bell, Libertarian candidate for governor of Indiana. He's the only third option on the ballot for governor of Indiana, and we're what we're doing is uh, we're showing people how many or a lot of different options that are out there besides your in-the-box status quo Republican or Democrat candidates. There are um, Republicans and Democrats everywhere. There are probably 99.9% of all the offices held for at least 100 years. And, you know, maybe there will be more competition in the future. We're interviewing 50-plus candidates running for the House, Senate, Governor, Attorney General, etc., mostly Congress, uh, that are on the ballot, who are the only third options in their district or area, Green Party, Libertarian, Independent, no party affiliation, etc. And so you can learn more about Rex at electrexbell.com. So let's give him a call, and uh, he's expecting our call. We'll have this interview here. And you can see all the interviews at libertarianprogressive.com. Please enjoy There'll this Verizon ringback tone while your party interviews. is reached. When you rooster crows at the break of dawn, look out your window and I'll be gone. You're the reason I'm a traveling on. Hello. Hi, uh, Mr. Rex Bell, uh, governor or potential governor. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com, blogtalkradio.com slash election channel. How are you doing this afternoon, sir? Not too bad. How about yourself? Doing great, and I'm glad to be doing this interview with uh, a candidate who's on the ballot in Indiana as a third-party option, um, and who's the only third-party option and who has the potential to uh, get elected on November 8th, 2016. And I, I, I know that um, from what you said earlier that you're just coming back from an uh, event. Uh, do you want to tell us about the event that you're having? Well, it was called the uh, Clark County uh, Liberty Festival, and we uh, had a booth set up down there. Just a lot of the local people coming through got a chance to visit with them and uh, share some ideas and uh, Picked up a lot of support, uh, just a, just seeing a whole lot of acceptance and, and really people wanting a third option this year. Uh, you know, I, I tell them constantly that, uh, you know, we're the good guys when we talk about the Libertarian Party, and, and they say, well, you got to be better than the others. And I, you know, I tell them, well, yeah, I agree the, the bar has been lowered this year, but, uh, you know, we're maintaining at the same level. Uh, you know, we've always been the good guys, just waiting for people to discover it. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, and, and so now you have a list of issues at electrexbell.com, and uh, you talk about the Tenth Amendment, fully funded pensions, property taxes, abortion, the drug war, religious freedom, marriage, Second Amendment. And I'm sure you can expand on others. There's also education, victimless crimes, roads, and taxes and jobs. How about um, property taxes? If you, uh, what's your stance on property taxes? Uh, well, we, we'd like to government. see them eliminated. Yeah, we'd just like to see them eliminated. You know, we think it's the, one of the most unfair taxes there is that somebody can, uh, you know, work their whole life and pay for their house, and then if they fall on a little bit of hard times, the government comes in and takes it from them. And, and we just, you know, we don't see any justification uh, for the government doing that. We, uh, You know, we maintain that we can do away with property taxes and income taxes, uh, fund essential government services with uh, uh, a small sales tax and then user fees. And, and we think that government, uh, you know, can do what it's supposed to do, uh, you know, with a heck of a lot less than what it operates on now. Well, I live in Florida. We don't have a state income tax. So it's just fully sales tax. The state of Washington also just has a uh, state sales tax. Um, we do have property taxes, unfortunately. Um, and there's about six or seven or eight or nine states that don't have state income tax. Um, so actually, that leads to the next question, because usually property taxes pay for things like education. And um, so um, what do you say about education? Well, you know, we, are, we know that uh, constitutionally, you know, we're required to make uh, 
education available for every student that wants it. And, and we think that we can, uh, you know, work through some school choice issues. We can uh, fund education with a uh, just a percentage of the sales tax. Uh, you know, people, when they talk about, well, if you don't take property taxes, you won't have any money for the schools. Well, you know, all the money comes from the people anyway. You know, there's only one place to get it, and that's from the taxpayers. And what we're looking at is a more fair system than uh, than setting up a, a property tax where some properties are exempt and some properties aren't. You know, in Indiana right now, you can have three houses, identical houses, side by side, and one of them can pay 1%, one of them can pay 2%, and one of them can pay 3%, just depending on who owns it and how it's used. So, you know, it, it's just a complicated system uh, that people can't figure out. A lot of people can't figure out how to to uh, make it work, and the people with a lot of money can figure out how to beat it. So, you know, we, we'd like to see it made taken to a more fair system. Yeah, and um, there's been some stories about some poorer people uh, that – have lost houses, through, you know, for not paying property taxes, and plus, you don't really feel like you own your property if you know you're constantly paying property tax yep. on it. Um, yeah. So, and, and you know, for, for rich yeah. people, don't have a problem with that, but poor people, you know, so people actually lose their home every year. You know, every uh, uh, it's in May and June, you'll start seeing uh, full pages of the paper, sometimes three or four pages properties that are up for sale for non-payment of taxes, and and these are real people, you know, people that are down on their luck out there. This isn't just some little blip in the newspaper. There's there's a person behind every one of those ads. Sure, absolutely, and that, that, that would probably be a good thing. A lot of businesses would probably want to move to Indiana as well, and um, so what, and as governor, you're, um, you know, probably the most responsible for safety, security, so what about the, um, the drug war and uh, victimless crimes. What do you? Um, how, how would you be the law and order person? Um, and what are your issues about uh, victimless crimes and the drug war, sir? Well, you know, when when we talk about uh, putting people in jail for simple possession, you know, we, we think that's wrong. We we can look at the history of the drug war in the last fifty years and and what's happened. You know, we've got the addiction percentage is about the same as it was when the war started. Uh, incarceration's up 700%, you know, and a lot of those people that are in there are in for nothing more than simple possession. And we just, you know, we don't feel that that's something that the government should be doing. You know, if if somebody has an addiction problem and they want help, you know, we need to treat it as a health problem. People should be able to come forward and ask for help without, you know, fear of being arrested. Uh, You know, and, and again, you know, we always throw in the caveat consenting adults that we're talking about here, you know. But, um, sure. I, it's, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, what are we accomplishing with the drug war? And, you know, it, it doesn't take much investigation to look at it and say we're not accomplishing anything but ending up with more people in prison, spending billions of dollars, uh, you know, on this fight. And, uh, you know, it's a matter of personal choice. And like I said, if somebody wants uh, help, that they should be able to to seek help without fear of being arrested. So, you know, we think that if we did away with the drug war, took uh, police back to what they were doing, what they should be doing, protecting us from force and fraud, you know, instead of legislating morals, uh, that there would be a lot less crime. Uh, We wouldn't see the shootings that we're seeing now because uh, police wouldn't have to approach everybody as an adversary. You know, they're... Uh, you know, when they stop anybody on the uh, street for any reason, uh, there's a good possibility that this person has, a, some, has broken some sort of a law, you know. And we think that if we would eliminate a lot of the just moral laws that they're trying to enforce now, uh, you know, we could get back to the uh, closer to what police should be doing and, and get back closer to what government should be doing. Sure, and, and that sounds very science-based as well as, you know, heartfelt based. I mean, if you look at all the polls of people who want it and the drug war to legalize, um, you know, certain drugs. And if you look at all the stats about the effect of people being addicted, like you said, and all the money that's going in, I mean, the stats, you know, if you put them in a compilation do speak for themselves. I mean, facts are just facts. What about, um, the second amendment? Uh, does that, uh, you know, what, what, what's your stance on the second amendments? 
Well, you know, I've always uh, supported the Second the Second Amendment, and and it's another thing that I've maintained. You know, that even if the Constitution didn't exist, you know, we have the natural right to defend ourselves. So, you know, it's something that I I push for uh, to make sure that our Second Amendment rights or protections are you know maintained. But I also maintain that if the if the grand or if the Supreme Court makes a bad ruling for the Second Amendment, uh, you know, we're not affected by that. The Tenth Amendment allows us to, uh, you know, just tell the Supreme Court, the federal government, you're wrong on this one. As a state, we are going to maintain not only our Second Amendment protections, but our natural right of self-defense. Yeah, absolutely. I have a right to defend myself, and, and so should everyone else, of course. And uh, so... Um, you know, a port. Well, let's. I see here fully funded pensions. Could you uh, tell us about that issue you have? Well, that's something where the you know the government is coming in and and these public pensions. Instead of setting that money aside, they've just thrown it into the general fund and used it. And now it's up to future taxpayers, um, you know, my children and grandchildren, to. Uh, you know, fund these pensions for people that are retiring now. And, and you know, our solution is, uh, you know, of course, take it, uh, give everybody their full pay and let them handle their own pensions. You know, that would be the simplest way to do it. Certainly, if somebody wants the government to handle their pension for them, uh, that's fine, but the, they should be able to expect that those pensions are safe and, and you know, will be there when they need them. You know, we're in a situation where, uh, you know, at any time, uh, voters could say, now, wait a minute, we didn't sign up for this, and we're not going to continue to pay into that. Well, the money's been spent, and the guys that spend it are out of office and retired and living in Florida somewhere. I don't mean to knock Florida, but that's where a lot of them go. But, you know, that's uh, <laughs> just the way it works. So we'd like to, uh, you know, we'd like to get the pensions turned over to individuals, and those that decide to leave with the government, they should at least be able to trust the government to, to keep that money in, in check for them. All right, and we're talking with um, Rex Bell, a libertarian candidate for governor. Uh, today is September 24th, and, of course, the elections are November 8th, 2016. And he's the only third-party option on the ballot for Indiana. And uh, we're talking about some of the issues on his website, electrexbell.com. And so we appreciate going through these issues here. And so... Um, what about roads and taxes? You have that listed as one of the issues. Can you tell us um, your uh, position on roads and taxes, sir? Well, you know, the Indiana's got some problems with their roads, and they're kicking a lot of uh, ideas down to the local level to put in a wheel tax or something to help fund the roads. And our position has been that when they collect a road use tax, it should be spent on the roads. Uh, as it is now, you know, they collect at the at the pump when they sell the gas, and then they put the money, uh, part of it goes to Washington, and they, uh, you know, divide it up into different uh, categories and pay for, uh, you know, any list of things, museums, and we come to Indiana, and you get walking trails out of it, which may be a, a good, uh, you know, a good project, but it doesn't fit under the, the heading of road taxes. The first thing the state should do, and the federal government should do and the uh, even local governments should apply all of the road use taxes to the roads. And, and then if we find out that's not enough to maintain them, you know, then we can look at it. But, uh, you know, I don't think the government should be coming to people and say, oh, my gosh, we need more money for the roads when they're not spending that money where it should be to begin. So all that's right, something we would push for. Great, great. And jobs, uh, jobs um, are important. And, and, and actually, a lot of things you've probably said would contribute to the job environment. But what do you specifically have to say about jobs itself? Well, when, you know, when it comes down to it, whenever the government now tries, you know, and government can't create jobs, but they try to attract businesses that, that will create jobs. And when they try to do that, uh, they give people a tax, uh, property tax break. Uh, you know, maybe they'll give them an abatement for 10 years or five years or whatever. And, and what we're suggesting is do away with the property tax. You know, if that if it will attract one business, uh, it would attract a thousand businesses if we did away with it. You know, we would have, and as soon as that happens, when you get more businesses here, 
and more jobs, and the companies have to start competing uh, for employees, you know, that drives wages up. So as much as I hate to use the uh, term win-win, doing away with property taxes is a win-win. You know, it not only provides jobs, but it provides higher wages at the same time. Uh, you know, once we do away with the income tax and people have more money to spend, that's going to raise the sales tax and the user fees it's just automatically. So, you know, we think uh, it's a situation, it's a solution uh, that's very workable. Uh, certainly the old parties don't like it because they like to have unlimited amounts of, of money. Uh, but we think we can fund, uh, you know, the government programs that need to be funded, uh, you know, without the property tax and certainly attract a lot of jobs in the process. Yeah, Rex, I, that sounds, um, you know, very exciting uh, for Indiana there. And, and, you know, if you're successful at that, I'm sure a lot of other states would be looking at um you know, this, this uh, blueprints for success. Um, and let's uh, focus on a couple of um, or a few social issues per se that you have here, uh, abortion, marriage, uh, religious freedom. If uh, Maybe you could just answer them, all three of those, uh, with this next question. What about those three specific issues that you have listed here? Well, you know, abortion is something that, uh, you know, it, it's something that people have been arguing about for uh, forever and ever and we'll continue to argue about it, there'll never be a government solution for abortion. You know, I, I think that's something that, we, that we, we're going to have to decide one of these days. I think we need to get it out of federal hands. You know, I think uh, different states would come up with different solutions, and, you know, I certainly uh, would applaud anybody that, uh, you know, tries to uh, figure out a way how we can stop abortion. Uh, put an end to it, but I don't think it's something that we're going to do governmentally. And, and I think that, uh, you know, if we leave it to where the states can make the decisions for now as we continue to work our way through it, and also, uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure that nobody is ever forced to fund somebody else's abortion. You know, I, I, I don't think we should be using tax money for it. And if we can get that out of the way, get the federal government out of the way, it's going to give us something to talk about and work on for the rest of my life anyway. You know, I, I know that we'll not get a, a, a government solution to it, but definitely get the, the federal government out of it and let the states work through it. And, and on, you know, a, I think marriage then, uh, you know, there's a, a – a push for gay marriage, and, uh, you know, there's a push against it. And, and, you know, we've just always maintained that the only role government should have in marriage is just making sure that, uh, you know, contractual agreements are, are met, you know, if that need arises. As far as the government getting involved on who can marry who and who has to accept the marriage and, and what marriages you can accept and what marriages you can't accept, we don't think that's any of the government's business. You know, that's something that people need to work out among themselves. And like I say, government uh, inter intervention should be minimal just to, to meeting contract or contractual obligations, and that's all. Uh, you know, religious freedom, We, you know, the Indiana went through the RIFRA bill that uh, gave one group of people one reason to discriminate uh, you know, they could discriminate for one reason, but other people couldn't. And we, you know, we're just opposed to that, saying that everybody has the same rights, you know, and everybody uh, has the right of freedom of association. That The government doesn't get to come in and say, yes, you can for one reason and no, you can't for another. That's a, an individual uh, decision that people need to make. And, and as long as there's no force involved, uh, no force or fraud involved, the government just basically needs to step back from it and, and let society handle it because, uh, you know, for the most part, society can handle it. Uh, you know, you pick up a, a one stray area every once in a while and the government's always, you know, uh, anxious to jump in and pass a bunch of laws over it. But uh, I think, you know, as a society, we just need to tell government to step back if we can handle this. All right, so it sounds pretty much like equal under the law, and as far as marriage goes, it sounds like what you're saying, which I like, a lot of libertarians have said this, it sounds very fair, you can call it whatever you want, the main thing is, it is yeah. contracts, and the government shouldn't really be involved, except for enforcing, you, you know, and making yeah. sure the contracts are upheld, 
And um, yeah, and abortion yeah, pretty that, much the government I, should stay out of it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, and and that's something that you know I understand uh, uh, abortion wise. It's a touchy issue. A lot of people, it's a uh, you know, it's their single issue. And, and if you're 100 percent pro life or if you're 100 percent pro choice. I can guarantee you, you'll never get a satisfactory solution out of the government. So, you know, it, it, yeah, and I think it most consensus, uh, most consensus seems to be, you know, not having taxpayer dollars go to it, and, and the life of the mother or, or something like that should, all, you know, and uh, and up yeah. to a certain point and how many months, and so, yeah. um, so and, that's and I a think consensus. States will decide that differently. You know, states will, states will certainly, I think. California would have a more liberal view of it than what Indiana would, but, you know, we're not going to be able to have the federal government come in and, and make a decision that suits everybody. You know, we'd never have a state government do that, but we stand a better chance, uh, you know, with, at the state level than we do at the federal. Now, for Indiana state, what do you think, where would it be specifically in that spectrum, do you think, at this I, point? I would just, yeah, I would suspect Indiana would come down with a, a more conservative, uh, you know, a more conservative approach. Uh, you know, even the Roe versus Wade offers, you know, where it's the uh, viability of the fetus. You know, that, uh, that I'm sure they would set the bar higher than California would, as far as that goes. If, you know, if, uh, if they set a bar, if the California would set a bar at all, which I would suspect there'll be some restrictions. No matter what happens, you know, the rest of our life, and that there'll never be total restrictions, and, and it'll just be a continue to be a fight. And, and, you know, government uses it to divide people now, anyway. You know, getting involved in there, that's something to keep our minds off of the uh, $20 trillion debt that we're looking at if we're fighting over a social issue. That's true, and and so 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 far we've talked about victimless crimes, we've talked about education, roads, and taxes jobs, um, fully funded pensions, uh, property taxes, the Second Amendment, uh, the drug war. So, yeah, I don't want, um, you know, any one issue to override the whole um, thing here. And uh, so and it's about building consensus. And so um, so what do you say to, um, you know, the people of Indiana, whether uh, they're Democrat, Republican, independents, why are you the best selection? Uh, option here for them uh, this specific year, 2016, sir? Well, I think I'm the best option because I offer them choice. Uh, You know, this is uh, basically you can get as much government as you want. You know, if you decide that you want the government to take care of your pension, uh, you know, jump at, just have at it. You know, the thing that I'm offering is a chance for people to say no thank you to the government. You know, that we've got this we can handle this on our own. If you want the government to handle your health care, just step right in and say, yeah, I'll go for that. But if you think you can manage your own life, uh, you know, the libertarians are the only ones that will give you that option. Uh, you know, certainly the the old parties going to let up on, on the management. They're going to keep coming through and, uh, you know, we're getting – they're getting more and more involved in education instead of less involved. You know, they're more and more involved in health care instead of less. So, you know, it's the type of thing if somebody is in a position where they say, and I would really like to make some decisions for myself, then the libertarians offer that option for the other parties do no, um, and a, a lot of people say they would throw them all out. So we'll see, you know, if that's the <laughs> actual case. Um and, and so they can give you a chance for four years. And uh, so does Indiana currently have a sales tax along with an income tax? But you wouldn't have both. Yes. You would get rid of the income tax and just have the sales tax. Get rid tax, of the right? income tax and nothing but a sales tax. We currently have a 7% sales tax. Uh, you know what? The figures that we've kind of come up with, we think it would probably end up around 10% for now uh, and then decrease. You know, we've got some pensions uh, some deals that we've got to work our way through, uh, some of the mess that was made before. We we can't just walk away from all of it. We're going to have to clean up some. There's, uh, you know, different options for coming up with that. Part of the surplus that the uh, Republicans claim we have now could certainly go into that pension and, and uh, you know, and get ourselves weaned away from that. But, uh, I, you know, I think that we could make it, uh, make it a workable, you know, we can come up with a, 
a workable program that way that people will still have a lot more money in their pocket at the end of the day and, and a lot more freedom to make their own choice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even with the 10% sales tax, which would be easy to figure out, um, I mean, getting rid of the state income tax and property tax, I mean, that would be huge. You might actually be the only state in the country that doesn't have a property tax, as far as I know. And uh, I think whatever side of the aisle you're on, that prop, I, you know, I've seen, heard a lot of, you know, Democrats and people who, who just don't like this the, the property tax either. And um, so, uh, well, let me ask you this: what, are, are there any? Um, are you going to have any? Uh, gubernatorial debates have you already been in some um what's the schedule like coming up here rex well on uh tuesday this tuesday uh morning at uh gosh i think it's at like nine thirty in the morning we're having our first gubernatorial debate it's at a high school in indianapolis and it's streaming to high school kids it's about education is what our first debate is it will all three be in and then on the october 3rd uh, we have another uh, debate about, uh, and I think it's going to basically center on uh, jobs and, and the economy and that sort of thing. And then on the 25th of October, we have a uh, another debate down in Evansville. Uh, it's, it's all about health care. It's, it's got some different, uh, each one of them is about something different and, you know, touch on three or four different topics. So, yeah, we've got three televised debates uh, coming up in the next month or so, and and looking forward to that, you know, to help us get the word out. But certainly we don't have the uh, uh, money that the uh, the big parties have. But, uh, you know, we, we think this is something that will get us out in front of the people. And, and when you talk to people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at the the number of people that agree with us. I, I've been, in, you know, traveling the state and talking to different organizations and the organizations are always asking, you know, well, what are you going to do for us? You know, what what what's the government going to do for us. But when you get people off and speak to them one and one um, people understand that, that it's got to be reined in. People know that government's too big, that it's spending too much money. And, and even if the organizations that they belong to don't know it, the individuals do. So, you know, we're drawing a lot of hope from that. And, and uh, you know, I, th- I think it's going to turn things around. Well, let me ask you a couple of follow-up questions that might be somewhat local. And just a thought on education. I mean, we spend like, what, about $10,000, $12,000 per student. I mean, if we just gave them that money back, I mean, you know, 10 students could pool up together and teach her $100,000 a year. I mean, there's lots of different options out there, and education is a lifelong learning process. Um what about the environment? I, I know a lot of environmental regulations have gone way too far. I mean, it's uh, you, you know some tragic um, examples. But does the state have some responsibility as far as the environment goes? Well, sure. I think you know there's some reasonable, uh, you know, reasonable restrictions that you can put on from uh, polluting somebody else's property. But you know, when stuff is It's gone so far overboard, and one of the, you know, I was talking to a uh, voter today when we were down at our uh, booth, you know, and uh, basically the EPA put him out of business. Uh, You know, he came up with an idea for some uh, metal stamping and some paint, and and that all passed. But when he was firing the paint on the EPA, EPA came in and said, well, you know, this is something coming out here that, it was bad that nobody had complained about or knew anything about, but they put a sensor on and tested it and, and gave him a big fine, and the company closed up, and now they're doing it in Mexico and selling the same thing back in the, in the United States. So, you know, it's just one of those things where there was no, uh, there wasn't any flagrant violation of anything. It was just that the, somebody working for the EPA was, you know, had jobs to do and looking for, uh, you know, looking for something to, to make their day, and and it costs us jobs, you know. And like I said, certainly, uh, you know, you need to watch out for flagrant violations. But uh, the fact that we need to go on a living should have a, you know, should take some uh, priority in that too. Sure, sure. And uh, now I'm not talking about government employees here, like uh, government unions. But what about in the private sector? Do do people have a right to organize and and unionize? Sure, they do. Uh, you know they don't have the they don't have the right to use force against somebody. Right. Uh, you know if you want to get together with a dozen people and 
and tell your boss, hey, we want an extra dollar an hour and, and we want to get off at 3.30 instead of 5 o'clock. Uh, you have a right to demand that. And if every employee says that's what they man, demand, uh, the boss can say, okay, or he can say, no, I'm going to get new employees, you know. And, and if you have a, if you are in a position where you are important to the boss, you know, he'll work with you. It's the way it works. But, no, you don't have the right to use your force or the force of government uh, you know, every uh, interaction has to be, uh, you know, mutual. Uh, you know, that that comes under that heading of, uh, you know, the freedom of association, and, and you work it out that way. And and if it's mutually beneficial, fine. And if one of you says no, I don't, I, I can't go along with this, uh, you go your separate ways. You know, we just we want to take the force factor out of it, and, you know, we know that any time the government is involved with anything, it, it uses force. So and that's why we want to minimize government intrusion into our lives. Sure, sure. And um, now, in fact, if um, – now, you did also – talk about small businesses here. Um, would you review – different laws and regulations in Indiana trying to make it easier for small and mid-sized businesses to start up? I mean, I hear like stories from across the country where people have to pay outrageous fees to become, you know, simple things like a, you know, a hair braider and, and stuff like that. And um, so I, I don't know what the situation is in Indiana, but, and also in combination, if um, you ended the drug war, I mean, you know, you could grow industrial hemp possibly and um and save money in the judicial system that way as well yeah you know industrial hemp is something that we've certainly pushed for and uh you know we've uh, we've been pushing for that as far as licensing you know there is so much licensing that goes on in businesses and and small businesses and regulation that you know is so totally unnecessary a lot of it is nothing more than protectionism uh, for existing companies. Uh, so, you know, anytime we can do away with that, anytime we can cut a layer of government or get the government out of somebody's way, uh, you know, we're just, that's what we're pushing for. You know, it, it's what we think is going to help raise the standard of living for everybody. Uh, so, you know, any anything at all that will cut back a, any part of government that doesn't protect us from force or fraud uh, you know, we need to look at thinning that out and eliminating it. Absolutely. And now I'd just like to ask you more of a a little bit of a personal question. Um, who are some of your favorite people, uh, past or present, elected or not, if you wouldn't mind sharing that with our audience today? Oh, gosh, favorite people. Well, I, I'd have to say my wife first thing. She's... <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. She's my she's my most favorite, and and she's elected. You know, my wife is an elected libertarian, and in, in uh, our hometown, she's the uh, town Great. court judge there. So you know, she's uh, she's got in there and uh, you know fought the battle and fought the fight. So uh, you know, I, I'm always uh, proud of uh, somebody when they step up into the step up into the line like that. You know, Harry Brown was always uh, you know when Harry was living, he was just one of my heroes because he was so good at putting the libertarian message out without, uh, you know, without being obnoxious about it. I, I was just very impressed with him. So, you know, there's a lot of, of people out there that I don't want to I'd be afraid of leaving somebody out, you know, but uh, those are certainly a couple of my libertarian heroes that uh, I'm proud yeah, to Yeah, Rex, you're the first with. person who said that, and that's uh, a good answer, and um, so that's great answer you know saying saying your wife and you know, i've asked everyone that and and so i'm glad you said that um well any uh final words of wisdom here um you know at, at the end of the interview here and we appreciate your time very much uh taking the time to uh, educate our audience and, and let them hear your voice and and your stance on issues here in this uh interview um yeah any final words here rex well, just, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the support that we're getting from people. Uh, I think you mentioned, you know, electrexbell.com is our website. They can go on there and find out more about us or uh, Electrex Bell on Facebook. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention there's a donate button uh, on the website there because we do, uh, you know, we're reaching out as best we can on a very limited budget. And, uh, 
you know, we certainly appreciate uh, any help we can get on that. Uh, we're looking forward to the to election this fall. It's you know, we just hear so many positive comments. I think we're going to make a a big showing and and a lot of gains this fall. Yeah, yeah. And if people are interested in this candidacy, I mean, there's lots of ways to donate money. Of course, um, would probably be the most helpful, and and also uh, phone banking. You know, getting the word out. Uh, you know, general support. Um, and yeah, well, door to door is always good. Yeah, door to door, definitely. That's one of the best. And um, well, it's a pleasure. And we do thank you again for your time today. Good luck in your campaign. And um, and people can uh, rewatch this interview here and and re-listen to it at libertarianprogressive.com. I hope you have a a wonderful rest of the weekend, Rex. Thanks. Thanks again. Appreciate thank it. you very much. All right. Bye. Take now. care, sir.